Russian invaders continue their attempts to occupy Chasivyar in the Donetsk region. Build analyst Julian Ropk writes about this. The observer believes that the Russians still managed to break through the city's defenses. Julian Ropk notes that the Russians were unable to cross the Seversky Donetsk Donbass Canal in the east for several months, but on Friday the Chechen vanguard crossed it and advanced 2.5 kilometers to the west along the southern edge of Chase of Iyar. After five months of fierce fighting, the Russian army broke through the Ukrainian front south of Chasev Yar and planted its flag on an industrial building 2.5 kilometers across the canal. Russian soldiers can be seen climbing the building and preparing a bridgehead there, Ropk wrote. The analyst explained that most likely, the Russian invading forces will not advance further west, but instead will turn north and attack the center of Chasev Yar. On October 20th, Russian invaders occupied the village of Zelenoy Toroy in the Pokrovsky district of the Donetsk region. This is stated in a report by the monitoring project Deep State. Analysts also confirm that Russian troops have advanced in Vishnevo, Izium district, Kharkiv region, Gornyak in Donetsk region, Olgovka in Kursk region and Lubomovka in Kursk region. The US is aware when and how Israel will respond to Iran's missile strike, US President Joe Biden told reporters ahead of his departure to Germany. Asked whether the US is aware of what response Israel will provide and when it will take respective measures, Biden said yes and yes. Biden declined to share any details regarding Israel's planned response to the October 1st missile attack though his remarks appeared to mark the first time the U.S. indicated it has reached an understanding with Israel on the nature of the retaliation. Asked by reporters about the prospects of Middle East peace, Biden said he sees an opportunity that we can probably deal with Israel and Iran in a way that ends the conflict for a while, stops the back and forth. We think that there's a possibility of working for a ceasefire in Lebanon. It's going to be harder in Gaza, but we agree that there has to be an outcome. What happens in the days after? The president added without elaborating why he thought this way. On October the 1st, the Islamic Republic launched a massive missile attack against the Jewish state in response to the killing of senior officials from the Palestinian movement Hamas, the Lebanon-based Shia movement Hezbollah and the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps. Tehran said that 90% of the missiles hit their designated targets. Israel, in turn, said that Iran had fired some 180 missiles into the country, most of which were intercepted. The Israeli general staff vowed to choose the right moment to surprise Iran with a counterattack. Israel has decided on the targets it could potentially strike in Iran, according to Israeli television reports. According to Channel 12 News, the military presented a list of targets to Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and Defense Minister Yoav Gallant as it finalizes preparations, which include sensitive coordination with other countries in the region. A report by the Khan public broadcaster said the political echelon had decided on the targets without specifying which officials or decision-making forum. The targets are clear. Now it's a matter of time, an Israeli source told the broadcaster. A soldier from the 79th Airborne Assault Brigade knocked out a Russian tank with a javelin, which is a very difficult task. As a result, not only the tank but also its crew will never participate in combat. Forbes writes that a lone Russian tank equipped with a projectile-proof armor and a front mine carriage approached the Ukrainian paratroopers and that is when the fighter fired an American-made javelin anti-tank missile. The 50-pound infrared-guided Javelin is one of the best anti-tank missiles in the world, and the 79th Air Assault Brigade's missile men are among the most skilled Javelin shooters in the world. The knocked-out Russian tank began to burn from the inside. All three crew members were saved, but for one of them, their clothes caught fire. The unburned tank crew tried to put out the fire that had engulfed their comrade, but at that moment, the tank exploded. Getting into position to fire a Javelin accurately is tough and dangerous work. 
Anti-tank teams must lie low, patiently track targets up to a mile away, fire a missile and then quickly move out of position. If the enemy detects you after the first launch, he will throw all his forces at you, explained a soldier from the 79th Assault Brigade. Ukrainian assault troops deploy their most aggressive soldiers to anti-tank teams. They can destroy a staggering amount of equipment. A missile man with the 79th Assault Brigade nicknamed Gagos destroyed 40 Russian vehicles in 18 months beginning in 2022. Another javelin gunner with the brigade, Junior Sergeant Andrei H, knocked out four vehicles in a single engagement in January. Knocking out just one tank is not that impressive, but for the defenders of eastern Ukraine, even small victories are preferable to defeat and retreat. It is worth noting that on July the 24th, the Ukrainian 79th Airborne Assault Brigade, holding the line near the town of Kurakovka, repelled one of the largest Russian attacks this year, a massive assault by 11 tanks, 45 infantry fighting vehicles, a BMPT tank, support vehicle, and 12 motorcycles with crews. By laying mines, launching drones, firing artillery and anti-tank missiles, the 79th Airborne Assault Brigade destroyed six tanks, seven combat vehicles and all 12 motorcycles. The brigade counted 40 Russians killed and 37 wounded.